Now, my guest today, I would usually have an actor on, a singer, or somebody in the performing world. This guy does everything, <laughs> absolutely everything. Not only was he a star of one major soap, he was a star of two. Musical theatre, straight theatre, radio, he's recorded an album, he's got a film out. I mean, there's, there's no end to this guy's talents. He's here today to talk about his new film that's just out on general release. So I'd like you to meet my guest today, Leon Lopez. Hi, Leon. Welcome Hello. to Emmy One. Oh, thank you for having me. How do you do it? How do you manage to do all of those things? It's like spinning, it's like spinning plates. If it was an Olympic sport, I think you'd get a gold. Oh, thank you. I think it's just because I spend so much time with nothing to do, if that makes sense. Like working as an actor, I trained, well, I went to Liverpool College and did performing arts. Yeah. So you have big chunks of time between jobs. So I always wanted to kind of fill it with stuff. So in between it or whilst I was working on a job, I'd be learning how to do something else. So uh, before I started acting, I was also, I was a singer before that. I was in a pop band in Liverpool. Um, an unsigned pop band so through that I learned about music production yeah. and put, writing songs and things like that so it's all kind of for me it all feels part of the same thing you know the evolution to become more and to move into directing was a it was a natural progression for me I always even ever since working on Brookside I was always interested in the technical side of it how cameras worked you know how how you'd edit things together mm -hmm. why you'd put shots together because Brookside was filmed with one camera nice. it wasn't like a lot of soaps are filmed multi-camera but Phil Redman insisted on doing it more like a real film so everything you saw was literally from one camera just at lots of different positions and different angles so that taught me an awful lot. So more lot. sort of one take than Let's no, go again, let's takes. go again and do so we'd, various angles. No, we'd, yeah, that's what it is. So it'd be like, literally, you'd have, you'd do your wide shot, then you'd do a two shots, and then you'd do close-ups on either way. And literally, that's how they shoot a lot of big blockbuster films. Yeah. So it kind of gave me, when it came to uh, direct, that's the style that I'm used to, and that's the style that I like to work with, and it's the best style to work with when it comes to film. Mm. So from the TV work, obviously, the two major soaps and loads of other T work, because I've just recently seen you in... A big epic on Channel Five. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, a big five-hour, big five-hour <laughs> epic about Tutankhamun yeah. Carmen with Ben Kingsley. What was it like to film that? Where did where did you film it? That was amazing. We filmed it in Morocco. Um, it was three months practically off and on. I was flying back. I was literally in about. 10 scenes, I had about five words to say, but the way they scheduled it, like I was flying out there for a week to do one scene mm. and then I'd be flying back and then, cause obviously they'd have to pay me more if they kept me out there the whole time. So on paper, it looked like I wouldn't have much to do, but literally from September till December, I was working out there. So uh, it was amazing. It was nice working with those types of people. Like Seb Ben Kingsley was so lovely. Yeah. Like I met, I was in two scenes with him and each time he comes up to you and he knows your name before he gets there and stuff, you can tell that he's kind of done a little bit of research. Um, no, it was fantastic. It's very different. Doing something like that, it was an American production, uh, Spike TV. Um, and the way they do stuff is very different to the way we do things here. It's a lot more humble in the UK. Like there, everything's big and yeah. brash. And that surprised me. I think that was still classed as a low budget thing, but it was massive. Like it was epic. There was thousands of people. It was massive sets. Oh, it was... A good experience. Yeah, yeah. So to go from uh, a lot of the TV work that you've done and into theatre, particularly musical theatre, because you were in, you did the Colour Purple, uh, We Will Rock You. Um, you also had uh, one of the leads in Rent as well. Do you have a, a preference to the choice of work that you like to do? I mean, do you do you enjoy theatre work more than TV work or? Um, I, I love them both. They're very different. It depends if you get a good part in anything. It's always good. Yeah. If you get a bad part or you're not doing much, then it never seems as good. And it always seems, you know, you can get a little bit bored or whatever. But I've been very lucky. I mean, I've had amazing experiences. I don't prefer theatre over TV or anything like yeah. that. It's just, it's a completely different world. It's a different experience. Um, obviously, TV is better because most of the time it pays more yeah. <laughs> in that respect. But a lot of theatre, especially now, I, mean, I shouldn't really get into it, but ugh, the way the West End is, and a lot of especially regional productions and smaller off West End stuff, as far as I'm concerned, the ripping people off but <laughs> 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 be careful <laughs> so <laughs> and also I mean there's the music music side of your career as well you recorded an album but I also noticed it was self-penned I mean you wrote yeah all I wrote the songs as well I didn't write all of them on the album I wanted to but um the people who I was working with as management at the time wanted to bring other uh, songwriters in and one of the songs was written by Gary Barlow one was written by David Snedden who was from not The Voice what was before The Voice 
Oh. Pop, pop, pop Academy or Fame Academy. Fame Academy. So it was kind of, they tried to get stuff in like that to kind of give it a bit of a boost, but um, it went a bit awry because the management company, after we'd finished the album, we were about to release it, the management company fell out with each other yeah. and split up. So I wanted to give it up and then one of the managers a couple of years later was like, oh, we'll put your album yeah. out. And he did, and it was nice, you know, he didn't do a big launch or anything, but it was just nice to kind of all the work that I'd spent. We spent about a year, a year and a half putting it together. So it was nice that it was out there, but um, it's a completely different game again. It's, I like the fact that I can kind of drop in now to these little things of, of all these, um, not little big things that I love, but if, I want, if you want to do music, you have to do it full yeah. time. Like you can't do it part time. It's like, I've got a luxury now when I'm making films and when I'm doing um, short films and the feature film, I can actually write music and use the music in, it into the films and yeah. things like that. So um, we had a bit of a situation with Soft Lad, the film that I made, where I didn't want to put any of my music in and then a few, a few of um, the artists who donated music last minute started asking for big amounts of yeah. money. And it was a bit upsetting really. One of the bands was a Liverpool band and they've not released them. They're not a massive band or anything, but I wanted the song on it because it was the only Liverpool artist that we mm. have featured in it. But then they turned around and said they want £10,000 to put it in. I was like, well, you know, you're you not Rihanna. You could ask me next time. I yeah. For nothing. Probably could have got Beyonce for £10,000. <laughs> it was a bit like, I wouldn't mind. You haven't even had a single out. But, and the song was nice, but because they wouldn't let us use it. Yeah. I just went away and wrote a song and put it in the film. So it's nice having that luxury that you can do that. Yeah. But um, yeah. Well now, Soft Lad. This is your new film that's just out. Yeah. On general release. And am I right in thinking you wrote this? Yeah. You directed this? You produced this? <laughs> you're singing in it? I mean, it... Not out of want. I mean, I would have loved to have had so many different people to do those different things. Like obviously I wrote it. it was a, I wrote it as a play about five years ago. And when I started making short films and I was shooting a few music videos, I always had, I, would, I was training myself to do a feature. So to do Soft Lad, it was quite, not simple, but it was a, it's, a, it's got five actors, minimal yeah. location. So I thought this would be the best thing to try and uh, do my first feature with. And then I did a film in Birmingham. It was like a low budget film. And I was speaking to the guy who put it together. And he said yeah. he made it for like 10,000 10, pounds. And he shot it over like three, two or three weeks and stuff. And everyone was doing it without being paid and things like that, just for expenses. So, and it was a lot bigger than what Soft Lad is. So I thought, well, I could actually do this. So I went away and I scheduled it myself. And I thought, well, how could I do it? And what would be the minimum? And I thought, I actually want to pay the actors and stuff yeah. like that. So I made sure everyone got paid minimum wage. And I worked out I could shoot the whole thing for about £17,000. And um, that was it, really. So I went trying to get yeah. the money. Didn't. And then um, basically my... My family member gave me the money to put it together, so oh, it was very great lucky. result. But you're very grateful that they did. Um, Cast-wise, how did you? Because there's quite a few familiar faces in it. Yeah, there is now some old friends and people that you've worked with before. Um, how did that come about? How did you sort out casting for it? Uh, it was interesting. I kind of the character of there's five characters. There's um, the, there's a couple who are married. Then there's um, the the woman from the couple, her brother his best friend, and then he um, falls in love with this guy later on. Now, the character of Sam, who's the guy who comes later, is my best friend, Craig. And uh, when I wrote the part, I always knew it was going to be him, even mm. if I was going to do a stage production that was going to yeah. play it. So it kind of, I wrote it with him in mind. Um, Suzanne Collins, who plays uh, the lead, the sister, she was my girlfriend in Brookside. In Brookside. She played um, Nikki Shadwick. So originally, it wasn't, that I wasn't going to use Susanna or I was going to use it. What it was, I didn't know where I was going to set it. Although it's called Soft Lad and it's very Liverpool, I didn't know whether I wanted to set it in a generic, nondescript place. Mm -hmm. But when I decided it was going to be in Liverpool, like Suzanne was the first choice. And um, Suzanne's daughter also plays a, a, own, a real oh, right. daughter in the film. So that was kind of a uh, nice little touch. Dan Brocklebank, who's um, now the gay vicar in Coronation Street, I did a short film with him years ago. And I sent him the script when I was thinking of doing it as a film and he really enjoyed it and he said he wanted to be part of this, so that was lucky. Um, Laura Ainsworth, who plays uh, the lead character's best friend, she was in a friend of mine, Darren Little, who's a writer, who writes for EastEnders yeah. and Coronation Street and stuff. He did um, a one-off drama called Kitten Chic and she was in that and I saw her in that and um, it turns out that another one of my best friends is her fiancé's his brother is her fiancé. Right, so, so it's like, yeah, it's like everybody who I know. So he was like, oh, he put me in touch with Laura, I sent the script, she wanted to do it. And then Johnny Labby, who's um, the main character, he was original. I had another actor who I wanted to play that part, but because I always wanted him to be mm. a dancer. But the guy who I was interested in 
was on tour doing right. um, something or other when we were planning to film it, so he couldn't do it. And then I do acting for camera workshops, and I was a friend of mine, Nancy, runs this one called W1 Workshops, and she asked me to come down and do a session with some of the students. And I walked in, and he was there, and I was like, he looks like David, like the character yeah. David, and then like he was sat with his feet pointed, and I was like, he must be a dancer. So I was chatting to him, I said, are you a dancer? He was like, yes. And then I said, where are you from? He was like, Jersey. And I was like, oh, God. And then, but because he was kept doing all these northern accents. I was like, have you ever done a Liverpool accent? I was like, oh, yeah, I was in Blood Brothers. So I made him do all oh, well, the Well, that's rest. a good start. At least he doesn't yeah, sound exactly. like a Birmingham Beatle. Yeah, well, it was kind of the funny thing with him is he's got, he's got, he hasn't really got an accent. Like, even the ex- he's in EastEnders now. Um, and the accent he does that isn't even his own accent. But he kind of molded himself around. But it was weird from the beginning of filming to the end. Like the last few scenes that we filmed, which are quite early on actually, um, he started sounding like me. <laughs> he was like emulating my accent, which is a bit of a messed up Liverpool yeah. accent. But um, I was just like, I pulled him over. I said, are you copying my accent? And he's really clever. Just have to hang out with you for a week. Yeah, and then literally. Get his spot he's, like, on. he's so good. He's so good. Like I, It's so funny because I can see the different scenes that we filmed at different points. And I can see the difference in his, I can mm. hear the difference in his accent in, yeah. as it kind of evolves, as it goes through. But uh, he's bloody, you know, he's a genius. He's so good. Such a talented Now, I've, I've seen the film. Absolutely loved it. I love the fact that it seems really multi-layered. You know, you're watching the film and then along comes the story. You go, oh, I, I get it. I know what's happening in this story. And then something else gets added into it and something else. And there's some oh, awful moment. <laughs> going, oh, my, this is going to be so cringeworthy, embarrassing yeah. for, for, for them. You know, yeah. it's like real. Oh, it was spot on. It was absolutely brilliant. So how oh, did you, you sort of come up with that sort of storyline and... and and it was and it was great to see that there's I'm not going to give too much away but it's that there is a happy ending towards the end and yeah it's not all doom and gloom well there wasn't a happy ending that was put in after I'd filmed it because yeah. everyone said it was too sad oh, right. okay. <laughs> so the bits like even <clears throat> the dancing sections at the beginning and whatever weren't originally in it and then people were like well he's a dancer so why doesn't he dance so there were pickup scenes that yeah. we put in uh, later but it ne- I mean it needed it um but I wanted it to end where it actually ends with the sister and the brother walking off. But then people were like, no, you can't. Well, you haven't turned it into a musical yet. So no, no, no. The dinner no, party no. scene is going to be the, the yeah, best God. number ever. <laughs> um, well, yeah, it's kind of, it's a tough one with stuff. Because like, I did enjoy, you know, I wrote it, as I say, as a play. And it was more to highlight things that I felt were missing. You know, there's loads of things to do with, it's not a story about HIV, but the stuff, it touches on issues of HIV uh, within the film. Because I was actually doing a play, it was a musical called Elegies for Angels, Punks and Raging Queens, which was about people who had lived with and died of AIDS in the 80s. And a lot of people came to see it and like, oh, it was so sad back then. And oh, you know, those things don't affect us anymore. Well, no, people don't necessarily die of it, but it's not gone away. And I wanted to write a story that kind of had that in it. And that was the original idea to write it. But then from writing it, it became something a lot bigger. It became more about, you know, lust, betrayal, family, you know, um, things that we'll do in the name of mm. love and whatever. And it was a lot more of a, which I thought, I didn't write it to be so multi-layered or anything. I don't even still to this day think it is, but because some people are saying, you know, I had this, there was this one like drag queen review on some online magazine. He was like, oh, I sat there and the guy next to me was telling me everything that's going to happen before it happened and all this stuff. And I was reading it on the toilet, this review, and I was nearly crying, going, really? Okay. I was thinking, you've probably must... seen it before. It's probably just me then, as I was too oh, was stupid it? to yeah. see what was coming. I was yeah. like, no, no. No, because a lot of people have come with the same thing as you. You know, you expect it to go one way and it goes somewhere yeah. else kind of thing. And again, like, literally, I woke up one night and I started writing it. And in the space of a week, I'd finished writing it. And from what you see on screen, it's not far away from from where it was like I didn't have a script editor or anything I just kind of wrote this story and I wanted to make it there's about 20 minutes cut out of it because there were, there were bits because we never had a script editor there was stuff that needed to be mm. edited um, and there's a couple of scenes that had to go because it gave parts of the story way too early and whatever but um, yeah it was like what kind of came onto my head is literally what you yeah. see kind of thing so there's a, clearly a lot going on in that head then. Yeah, probably. Um, so how had the general release how what was the the general reaction uh, well, you had good results and it was funny really because even when we were making it people were like why are you making it like we had the sound guys like why are you making it I said I don't know I just want to make it it's like is it for DVD is it for cinema I said I don't know you know just it's a story that I wanted to, and it was more for me because I wanted to make a feature film yeah. um, and then I finished it I wanted to enter it into BFI Flair which is like the gay and lesbian film festival 
Uh, so I kind of had the deadline to get it ready by then, so I did. And there was a few problems with the sound edit and whatever, but we did a screening and a couple of friends of mine who were producers and stuff came to see it. And then they advised me to send it to uh, distributors yeah. and whatever. And uh, I had a choice of two distributors and we decided to go with Peccadillo Pictures. And they've been so supportive. And so, you know, normally they don't, they're kind of, not that they don't take films on in this way. I think this is the first thing they've kind of took from such an early level. Normally mm. it's completely finished and maybe got distribution all over the world and whatever, but they've been looking after this as its own, our own little baby. Um, and they've had put us on the Pout Fest tour, so it's been around the UK and it's had lots of cinema screenings. I think we've got some international cinema screenings coming up. Um, we've had festivals in Bangkok, the, the Gay and Lesbian Film Festival, uh, Q Film, Q Fest in yeah. Indonesia. Um, and we premiered at the East End Film Festival in London. And then it, the actual release is October, October, November, October for online downloads and November for the Blu-ray right. and DVD. So I don't know. So we can all get it just in time for Christmas then? Yeah, no, it's, I don't know if it's a Christmas, but we're even... And how many people go, yeah, soft lads. No. <laughs> it's very, well, lots of people don't know what it means. So yeah. what does soft lad mean? Well, I'm no, like, it's about time people from Liverpool started educating the I rest of the world. But I thought it was like a thing that was said around everywhere. I didn't know it was such a... Uh, we've, no, we've just got to learn them to talk proper, yeah, haven't we? Yeah, soft lad, <laughs> I think it makes sense, doesn't it? It's like soft lad, soft in the head, you know, you're soft. You're so, so what's next? Is there something else that you want to do or something um, else that you haven't tried yet? I just want to make another film now. Yeah. I want to make something on a bit, a bit more of a bigger scale with an actual budget. So uh, Craig, who is in the film, he plays Sam in Soft Lad. We write a lot of stuff together as well uh, and we put stuff together. So we've got like a project um, called Joyride about two brothers and one of them dies and the other one goes to prison. And we finished that. The script's ready. Everything's quite dramatic, actually, that we do. And then we've got another... Well, there goes your budget. Then. I know. Well, and to be honest, I think we could do it for a small budget. Like, we've got a couple of um, applications in with Film London and stuff, which we're trying trying to go down the legit route now because I didn't know how to put it all together. But since doing this film, I've got a lot of help and people are trying to yeah. assist me putting packages together. Um, and then we've got another project that we're writing, which is almost finished, about um, a gay couple who opened a and b in um, Cornwall. And it kind of deals with the issue of like male rape, male man on man rape kind of thing. So it's again, it's quite topical and quite gritty, but it's just, I don't know, it's just stuff that's not really spoken about. It's, it's nice to kind of put it then, yeah. yeah, you could look at it like that, yeah. Well, Leon, listen, I hope, I wish you every success for the future and I Thank hope you, you very have much. great success with the, the release of the DVD. Thank you. Um, it's a great film. Um, thank you very much for joining me no, on ME1 TV. Thank, thank you. you. So tell me what you're doing to me. I'm going out of my head. This burning inside of me. You gotta hold on me, bad. I don't wanna run.